Michigan voters are heading to the polls in Democratic and Republican primaries today with the potential of major implications for November. President Biden faces a test of his support in this swing state. Some Democrats there are urging voters to choose uncommitted to send a message about his response to the Israel-Hamas war. Meanwhile, former President Trump is expected to beat former U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley in the state tonight, but he faces a block of voters who may favor still his lone rival left in the race. Caitlin Huey Burns and Ed O'Keefe join us now. Caitlin is CBS News' political correspondent. Ed is CBS News' senior White House and political correspondent. Ed, let's start out with you. You are near the polls themselves, and you can shoot baskets while you're there, which is great. Uh, let's just start us off with what you're hearing from the voters with whom you're speaking tonight. Scott, there is an interest in this option that primary voters on both sides have had for several years, and that is the ability to vote uncommitted or, in essence, register opposition to those that are on your primary ballot. There's been a big push here among progressives, among Arab and Muslim American leaders to use that option as a way to send a message to the president that there's displeasure, criticism, concern for his stance on the ongoing conflict in the Middle East. We heard from some voters and volunteers about why it is they're going to vote that way. And at this point of time, um, with what's happening internationally with um, our current foreign policy and the way Biden has been handling the situation, the uncommitted option on the Democratic ballot um, seems to send a very strong message and amplify our voice. Our goal is to organize enough people behind the vote uncommitted box to send a message to Biden and his administration. And we should point out it's not just Arab and, and Muslim Americans who live in this state. The biggest concentration of them in the country is here in Dearborn. Uh, Jewish voters, black voters, Latino voters we've heard from across the state say they too want to use this as a way to register their concern. And there's nuance to this. Just because someone might vote uncommitted today and not for the president in the Democratic primary doesn't necessarily mean they're not going to vote for him in November. There are those who say there's no way they're going to do it because they're opposed to the fact that so many civilians have died in Gaza, many of them with relatives in this city or across this state. But there are others who see this as a way to send him an early message. We talked about it with the Democratic mayor of this city, the first Arab American mayor of this city, earlier today, uh, and, and he explained some of the nuance. Take a listen. We've continually asked for and demanded for a permanent and lasting ceasefire. And we have to see that echo in the highest office of the world, in the president's administration. And so people are trying to come out today on Election Day and to cast a ballot for uncommitted, to advocate uh, for a course correction, or else we risk losing all of American democracy with the re-election of Donald Trump. There are those who say, I'm voting uncommitted today. I'm totally opposed to voting for the president in November. There are those who say, today's a chance to sort of send him a message and we'll see about November. Where do you come down on that? I think for me, it's, you know, every resident is, is, is going to be different uh, on this issue. It's, it's hard to walk up to somebody who has lost dozens of loved ones in, in Gaza and ask them how they're going to come vote come November when they're suffering and, 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 and feeling much grief. I think personally for me, uh, short of seeing a course correction, um, you know, all that does is open up at least the, the doors for more conversation. We want to see a ceasefire. We want to see a restriction of military aid. We want to see the re-entrance of humanitarian aid, which is down 50 percent month over month now. Um, and we want to see a just solution for the Palestinian people, because a reversion back to the status quo pre-October 7th is also unacceptable. So for you, voting uncommitted today doesn't necessarily mean voting against the president in November? I think for me, voting uncommitted today is sending a message of we're trying to hold our elected official accountable. And that's what this uh, system provides us. It's organizing a voting block, organizing this community, and trying to usher our country forward on a better path. Scott, traditionally, the uncommitted vote gets about 20,000 votes uh, cycle to cycle. The hope is to get at least 10,000 to send a signal to the president and remind him that Hillary Clinton lost this state by about 10,000. But there are some here in this state who believe it's going to get more than that and, and well into double digits. We'll see. Uh, let's bring in Caitlin. This just feels so different than February in an election year is supposed to feel. We know the winners mm -hmm. <laughs> tonight, and it's so early in the calendar. So that being said, 
What do you think is interesting or worth watching for in that context? Yeah, you've heard some Republicans describe this as the primary in name only because Donald Trump is the favored candidate in most of these races, including in Michigan tonight. Nikki Haley making the point today that she's only spent about two days in Michigan. Donald Trump has spent, in her words, eight years campaigning there. Um, what's interesting, though, to watch, though, is what the Haley campaign is trying to message coming out of Michigan, acknowledging pretty much that they are not expecting to uh, win by any means. Um, but they are trying to connect it to exactly what Ed was talking about. She very much sees herself as now the protest candidate to Donald Trump and saying over and over again, you know, she's gotten about 40 percent of the vote in some of these states and South Carolina almost that that represents the party, the, the percentage of the party that is upset with Donald Trump. She, so she, her campaign is saying today, look at the results coming out of Michigan for Biden and that protest vote. We're going to send the same kind of message. The issue, however, is that as she looks forward to Super Tuesday, you know, how much can, how, how far can you go by not winning any states? And especially Michigan will deliver the fifth state loss for her. She's vowing to continue on for, through Super Tuesday. But again, tonight, Although we know that Donald Trump is likely to win, it still gives him kind of the momentum to keep going forward. And this is a swing state for a reason. Michigan has everything. Farms, factories, big cities, small towns. If you get outside of Dearborn and the immediate suburbs of Detroit, what do you find interesting or what are you watching for tonight? I think we have to watch western Michigan. That's the part of the state where guys like Peter Meyer and Fred Upton, former members of the House Republican Caucus hail from, and that kind of Republican still lives and works and exists and wants to be part of the GOP in this state. Do they out there in that part of the state or maybe here in Metro Detroit favor uh, Nikki Haley over Donald Trump? We'll see. Um, and we'll see if at all, if she's able to get even close to the possibility of accruing at least a handful of delegates in a state that's got a messy way of allocating them in the next few days. And it's so emblematic of the troubles that so many of these big battleground states are having at the state Republican level in terms of organizing them and putting people in charge who can raise money, who can put together an organization that turns out voters. There's a real concern that that could be a problem here in Michigan come the fall. Hey, Caitlin. When you watch Nikki Haley campaign and you hear her messaging, do you see her and hear her making explicit overtures to these Democrats to come over, these blue-leaning independents to come over, or is she more subtle about it? It's a really good question because that is, you know, kind of her coalition, really. She's not making overt overtures, but she is in her messaging, which is, if you want to turn the page from both Donald Trump and Joe Biden— come on in. And we've talked to a lot of Democrats on the campaign trail that are going to her events that are looking exactly for that. Now, she has been hit over and over again by the Trump campaign for that kind of uh, appeal, I should say. Um, and they are also saying that, you know, Democrats supporting her is not representative of re the Republican primary. Um, but it is uh, uh, explicit in her messaging of, if you are tired of, of both parties right now, come to my side. The question is, can she win enough to be able to carry that message through? Certainly, she has the fundraising. I mean, she's continuing to raise money. She is well-funded enough through Super Tuesday. Um, but it's interesting to kind of see this acknowledgement that um, this is a protest candidacy to Donald Trump. Is there a lot of advertising by her? I mean, anecdotally, you hear she's on the radio, she's on television. You get it on your phones if you live in Michigan. Did you yeah. get a sense of that? Well, Michigan's interesting, too, because there was such a short time frame. Um, uh, you know, there, she spent a month in South Carolina campaigning because you had a month leading up to that primary. This is such a tight turnaround. Uh, Ed might know better than I do, but her campaign is spending furiously um, on air. They announced a big ad buy last week um, heading into uh, the Super Tuesday state. She's on a seven-day, seven-state swing, so she's not even in Michigan today. She's already in Colorado and beyond. Ed, how much are you hearing or seeing of Nikki Haley, even though she's not in the state, while you're in Michigan? Again. Not not as much as you'd think. And I think the next few days going into Super Tuesday, as she stretches herself across these 10 states for campaign rallies and notably for fundraisers, let's see to what extent she's penetrating the local markets with advertising, with earned media, with any sign of a ground game that can help her win somewhere, whether it's in the West where she is today or up to New England where she's headed soon. Ed O'Keefe, Caitlin Huey Burns, thank you both.